Hey folks, in this video I'm going to share my journey with you as far as insulating my garage doors. I'll show you how to insulate your garage doors. I live in a cold climate, not a hot climate. And so we're going to make use of inch and a half styrofoam SM and some reflective kits. Let's get to it. Okay guys, so let's start off with the why. The why is because I don't want to freeze my butt off <laughs> in my garage when I'm doing my DIY products, okay? And so to make it simple for you, the other why is because if you go to Home Depot like I did a few months back and you price out uh, custom made or, you know, Home Depot insulated garage doors for two of them, eight by eight, you're looking at about seven grand. All of this stuff here, inch and a half styrofoam SM, uh, four cans of Gorilla Snot to, that's your foam insulation to go and in, in fill in the gaps. Your reflective material, everything all in, you're looking at about 500 bucks and maybe cheaper in the US because I'm in Canada. But that's the long and short of it. I want to stay warm in the winter and I want to save a little bit heat energy because I'm heating my garage with a small electric heater up in the corner there. So I only need it to be about 10 degrees or 14 degrees. I'll normally have on like a sweatshirt like this and some coveralls if I'm working out of here. And the warmer I can get it, the better it is. I save a little bit of money on heating, so that's the why. Okay guys, so what you can see here is the foil kit on this side and the styrofoam on that side. But what you can see is this side has the styrofoam underneath it because I installed this last year and I can put my hand on here and it's nice and warm and it's about eight degrees Celsius in this garage right now. Um, but when winter came, this past winter, I found that just the reflective stuff with uh, nothing else behind it was useless because it didn't have enough of a thermal break. So I, I was able, I was really impressed with this stuff and I'm going to put the part numbers into in the description for you. I was able to pull all this stuff off. The adhesive that they give you, it's like two-sided sticky tape, it's, it's amazing stuff stands up to the cold, does all that good stuff. And then I put it back on with aluminum tape and it works great. The first thing that you want to do though is make sure that you lubricate all your garage hinges and everything. So any place where that's going to make it difficult for the garage door to open, you want to make sure it's lubed up. I can still get at them now that the insulation is on and everything, but it's just better to just do it up front. And then the key is acetone. So when you go to put the adhesive on, whatever you're sticking it to, wipe the surface down with acetone. It won't take the paint off. So these were like a kind of a beige color garage door. I wiped them down with acetone and then I use the adhesive to stick it on. And what you'll see is that this thing is, there's an air gap in there and that further helps to keep the heat on the inside. So the foil is reflecting the heat and pushing it back into the room and the SM is giving you that thermal break that you're looking for. If you're new to SM, Styrofoam SM, this is a piece of half inch Styrofoam SM. I use it for my shop chair over there to sit on and if, if you're new to SM or you're new to DIY, this stuff is your friend. You can put this stuff under your butt. You could be out watching a football game on a steel seat. And I swear to God, you will feel, it'll feel like you have a heater under your butt. So you could take, you, you know, you gals, you could take this or guys, you could sew this into a nice little pouch or whatever you want. So it looks nice. You take it to the, the stadium or whatever. But I used to use this. I take a piece of this stuff out on a cold, icy lake, minus 30 degrees, put it right on top of the ice and sit on it for ice fishing. Okay. This is amazing. This is half inch. What we got in here is inch and a half. So now you got the sort of overview about the foil and the SM. Now let's go to the other side and I'll show you how I put this stuff together. It's really easy. Anybody can do it. Okay, so here we are on the Styrofoam SM side. And so to do this, you're looking at one, two, three. So I needed three sheets that were two feet by eight feet long to cut them to size to fill here. And then the excess I was able to fill in up here. And all I did was I measured from here. So this is the crease where the garage door is going to fold. There's the other crease. 
Whatever the distance was here to here, I measured it about an eighth of an inch, eight to a quarter of an inch thicker. Try a panel first, you'll get the hang of it. It's easy peasy. And then I did the same thing on the width. Like sometimes there's a butt joint here, others there's a, a cavity. So this one has a cavity going this way. And sometimes you'll be able to push the styrofoam into the cavity. And, but you're not gonna get it 100% sealed and that's where the foam comes in. So the, the, uh, the Gorilla Snot that I used, it's called Great Stuff. This is the low expansion, okay? There's a red one that's high expansion. You don't wanna use that. And you also, don't want to get this stuff on your pants. I ruined these pants by letting it drip on my pants and my wife tried like hell to get it out. There's no way. So make sure you got your shop clothing on when you're using this stuff. It's messy. Make sure you got good ventilation. You don't want to get sick from the fumes or what have you. But um, really straightforward. I mean, to, to do this, to get the foam panels in, um, it's, it's a little bit tedious cutting the pieces to fit around the windows. But you're looking at a couple hours, it's not that difficult. And I'm at the stage now where this is done and the excess pieces, you just pull them off like so, or you can cut them off with one of these one-way saws. It's kind of like a hacksaw. This is one of those called Pro Point. It's like a, one of those Japanese pull saws, very precision. Uh, but if you, you, know, you wanted to, you could cut it off, but most of the stuff just falls off like so. And then I'm just gonna put the foil on top of this where you're gonna burn time, putting the foil on these bottom parts here, no problem. Um, just make sure that when you put the foil on, don't put your adhesive where there's a joint, you gotta leave a little bit of a gap here. But it's, it's really easy, it's not difficult. And then you're gonna finish sealing it up like I did on the other side with the aluminum foil tape. So, you know, expansion foam, a cutter like this. I cut the uh, eight foot panels. I did the cross cutting with one of these. You know, I just used a, drew a line and, and cut it out with these. And then the longer cuts, I ran them through the table saw. So really easy. And it's like hot knife through butter on the table saw. It doesn't bung up your blade or anything like that. So no worries there. Um, I had, I originally, when I did the door last year, I had the foil covering the windows. And the missus wasn't too happy about that. She said the garage, look like a grow up so I conceded and said okay I'll pull it off but you know the reality is this is a heat loss but you get the light coming in as well but I'm telling you as soon as I had these panels in here and once the foam is cured these things are not going anywhere and you will see some videos uh, guys talking about don't overload the weight of your garage okay so that's why I say lubricate the doors first and what a lot of people don't do is this spring here, that's your torsion spring for your garage. So take some white lithium grease and lubricate it so that when those fingers are coming together, they're sliding. You don't want them to get rusted and stick, then you're gonna have a problem. But this door over here, no problem at all. You're not adding very much weight uh, with the styrofoam, all this and the foam and even the foil, no big deal. And that door is super quiet. Now I've lubricated all, anything that rolls or could possibly squeak or what have you. I've lubricated it, so today I'll just put the foil back on and then I gotta put my cable mechanism for the door release. In my case, this door never opens, um, but as I, my journey in the DIY situation with the table saw and all that, I might set this place up so that I can open the door and cut long boards like long sheets of plywood with the table saw or what have you, but right now, I mean, so there you go guys, I mean, you're gonna have some big chunks of this foam that you'll have to pull off afterwards. But another trick um, is that these cavities here are empty. So you wanna get your foam and fill in all these holes because the more holes you can fill, the warmer it's gonna be, the better the, the break you're gonna have between the cold on the outside and the warm on the inside. Okay guys, because I have to do the reflective side. I still have one of these kits that I haven't opened. So I thought what I would do is share that with you and then you can see what you're gonna get for your $68 minus tax and shipping. Okay, so basically you're gonna get a big roll of this stuff. 
that will be adequate to do both sides of one door. So you need two kits. And the total price for this, I think I already mentioned this, uh, it's $183. I got this from J uh, JR Global Sales, but I'll put links in the description for all this stuff. And then inside of this kit, see if I can open this quick for you. Yeah, see this is, so the idea of this is you can, you're going to get two sections of this, you'll have enough to do the, the full door. And it's about, I don't know, quarter of an inch to three sixteenths of an inch thick. And then these guys here are for the two-sided sticky tape. So these long pieces, they go on the door first. And even if you run these over top of one of the joints, you won't have a problem with the door going up and down. This one works just fine. So you get two of those and you get a roll of the two-sided tape. And like I said earlier, this two-sided tape is amazing. I put that foil on last year and then took it off this year in the cold weather, and a lot of it, I was able to reuse it. I did uh, do a bit of overkill with the aluminum tape, but that's just me. Um, and uh, remember, one thing you wanna do, if you're gonna, you're gonna adhere anything to any metal surface like that, get yourself a can of, this is acetone, professional grade solvable is called, I guess that's the brand name on it, but uh, wipe down the surface before you stick to it because that cuts the oil film and then that gives the ad adhesive a better chance of sticking. But like I said, there are two-sided tape that comes with these kits, it's friggin' amazing. So you're not gonna have too many worries there. Now, one last little pro tip I'm gonna show you, so don't skip yet. <laughs> um, I'm gonna show you what you can do with the leftover Styrofoam SM. So. The leftover styrofoam SM that I have, a lot of the pieces are about three to four inches. So my bench here is, it's about three feet. So these are about four foot sections. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay them out here on the bench, like so. I'm gonna tape them all together with tuck tape. That's stuff you use for the insulation on your home. I'll tuck tape them together and then I'll just be able to take these and roll them all up throw them up on the top there. So anytime I need to cut a four by eight sheet of plywood, I can use this leftover stuff. And this is inch and a half uh, SM. And like I say, it gives you a heck of a thermal break on your doors, finish it up with some reflective foil stuff for foil insulation and you'll be laughing. So that's gonna be a wrap for this one, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Um, like I said, I'll put links in the description for you. If you have con uh, questions, uh, by all means, connect in. I'll try and help you out as best I can. But um, I think I already mentioned that even if you've never done DIY before, you really don't need a lot of you know, expensive tools. Yeah, I cut the foam with my table saw because I have it, but you, know, you could cut it with one of these and it's just easier with the table saw. And I think the only thing that I didn't mention is the uh, foam I used. <clears throat> so these panels, you'll see they have like a rabbit cut on the end of them. And so that's what I, when I was doing my cross cuts, I just put this on the edge of the table, cut this off and away you go. So very easy to work with, simple job, and you're gonna save yourself thousands of dollars, you know, because the other option is buying very expensive custom insulated doors to the tune of about seven grand. Okay, you can get a set for five grand or four grand in your area, but that's still more expensive than the DIY. So there you go, folks. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this information useful, hit the subscribe and like buttons for me, and I'll see you in the next one.